I'm Sarah Rankin, Associate Professor of Law and Director of the Homeless Rights Advocacy Project at Seattle University School of Law. Today, I'll be briefly discussing why unlikely allyship is necessary to solve homelessness. Housing and homelessness is one of the most polarizing and controversial topics imaginable. As a lawyer, I've opposed many entities and efforts that make homelessness worse. It's not uncommon for me to get hate mail or angry voicemails. As a homeless rights advocate, it's easy to make enemies or at least to make people upset. Increasingly, policymakers and the public favor our current approach, which prioritizes law enforcement and criminal justice responses to manage homelessness. But this approach doesn't work. Studies show it is inhumane, always expensive, often illegal, and often makes homelessness worse. So such approaches are unpopular even when they've proven not to work. Homeless rights advocates and businesses are opponents. We fight laws that criminalize homelessness. Businesses push for the enactment and enforcement of these laws. It often seems like nothing is changing. Debates around homelessness are more and more polarizing. About a year ago, after a particularly bruising fight, I had an epiphany. Let's reframe this source of conflict into an area of mutual interest. Both homeless rights advocates and businesses want unsheltered homelessness to stop. We may have different motivations for wanting it to end, but we want the same thing. We just need to agree on how to do it. This shift requires us to remove our efforts from the context of ideology and emotion and instead place them in the context of concrete data and evidence about the most cost-effective way to end chronic homelessness. First, we had to work together to establish the understanding that chronic homelessness is different than homelessness generally. Chronically homeless people are a specific subset of homeless populations. The majority are unsheltered and all suffer from disabling conditions such as chronic physical health issues or untreated mental illness that helps to explain the persistence of their homelessness. The data shows that chronically homeless people are the most vulnerable, the most visible, and the most costly to the public. The good news is that for chronic homelessness, we actually know how to solve it. Decades of studies show Supportive housing is the most proven, most humane, and most cost-effective solution to chronic homelessness. It's important to know that supportive housing is distinct from affordable housing. Supportive housing is permanent or non-time limited housing with wraparound services. Decades of proof that supportive housing works exist. It just needs to be brought to scale. Otherwise, we are just making a little dent in a bigger problem. So I began talking with others about proof that our current approach to chronic homelessness doesn't work. And I began sharing this extensive proof that permanent supportive housing does. I could sense excitement around framing the issue in a way that wasn't ideological, but practical. I discovered that much like me, Lots of people were tired of being polarized, tired of being pushed into one side of a debate or another. Many of us were hungry for a third option, a way to move forward out of debates and towards solutions. So I reached out to some business leaders and told them, hey, I know we haven't gotten along real great in the past, but we actually don't need to continue to fight. There's another way. We can reframe our problems as a mutual interest. We can agree to focus on evidence and data to end chronic homelessness. And so the Third Door Coalition was born. We began building an intentional culture of collaboration and trust around this mutual interest of, of ending chronic homelessness through supportive housing. We kept our group small so we could hold ourselves accountable. We recognize we may not meet, agree about many things, but we are partners on ending chronic homelessness through supportive housing. And we've made tremendous progress in less than a year. We have a website, infographics, detailed reports. We're finalizing our 501c3 status. We have a business plan, a communication plan, and we're working closely with state and local government officials on comprehensive proposals to end chronic homelessness in Seattle within five years. 
We made such progress because our voices are stronger together. Business leaders ask us hard questions. Advocates and service, provider, uh, service providers provide data and talking points. But business leaders are also listening and spreading the word about permanent supportive housing to their networks. We've networked with marketing teams who have volunteered to create a brand package for us. We've drafted several op-eds together. We're creating community education materials to share with the public, policymakers, and others. I think the Third Door Coalition is addressing a real need for hope. First, our work helps to combat compassion fatigue. We want to change the mis misperception that homelessness is an unsolvable problem. And second, we're showing that people with diverse ideologies and perspectives can work together. We can achieve trust and carve a productive way forward. We've learned that to fight an issue as polarizing as homelessness, unlikely allyships are required. Different resources and perspectives need to come together. This connection creates more effective work product, creates greater buy-in from broader groups. And we've grown efficient with our communication and collaboration. We're streamlining our resources. I've been working on homelessness for over a decade, and this is the most hopeful I've been that we may actually be able to end chronic homelessness in Seattle, King County. We're happy to share the spark with others, so I hope you'll feel free to check out our website at thirddoorcoalition.org for more information. My own homeless rights advocacy project aims to release a new report within the next few weeks on what cities are doing to fight chronic homelessness, and you'll see one of the key takeaways is that unlikely alliances are necessary. This is my contact information, so if you're looking for additional information after this uh, presentation, I hope you'll reach out. Thank you.